Okay, uh, review time. This is a 3D printer. In fact, it's the Maker Select 3D Printer V2 from Monoprice. Uh, its claim to fame was it was incredibly cheap. Uh, it was $350 list, and they had a big sale on a couple weeks ago. They took $70 off, so uh, $280. Uh, I've been sitting on the fence for a long time looking at these uh, printers, and uh, when they were at 1000 bucks, it wasn't uh, worth my time. But when it drops this low, uh, time for a teardown. Uh, let's see, it package nicely actually. I think they're producing some fairly high volumes. Um, the packaging, looking down here, there's a nice piece of paper. Uh, they've done a good job. Uh, this little one sheet of paper actually is the assembly instructions and they were very clear. I only took a few minutes to put this thing together, so uh, it's no gigantic kit. Uh, the next thing you see as you take the foam off is the um, control head. It's uh, all integrated into a single box. It takes a, a power cord in the back there and then it's already permanently wired into the chassis, so super easy to use. Uh, pop off the next bit of foam, you can now sort of see the two assemblies. Uh, there's basically a, a vertical frame and a horizontal frame, and they all bolt together. Uh, before we get to that, though, here's the box of accessories. Um, from left to right, you can see there is a bag of screws and cable ties and the uh, hench, uh, hex wrenches you need to assemble it. So, kind of like Ikea there, actually, even provided the tools you need. Uh, the card there isn't blank, it actually has all of the... Uh, tools you need to actually use the printer uh, straight out of the box, plus uh, a few nice little models, which is handy. Uh, a, a cable, of course, to connect to the computer. Uh, the thing on the left there, I believe, is to clear the nozzle. Not entirely sure, I must admit. Um, the thing in the middle is the scraper to pry the uh, print off the bed. It basically adheres to it. A uh, power cord, of course. And uh, the last little bit was a um, holder for the spool that mounts onto the top of the assembly. Uh, taking out the box here, just looking completely into it, uh, there's this uh, extra pad for the print head, and they even provide some uh, filament, so you can really truly get going right out of the box without buying anything else. That's uh, a sure nice. In terms of assembly, here's the uh, three units. They're sort of packaged like this. We just take all the foam away, and if you spread them out, you can see they're all wired together. And uh, then, quite frankly, uh, just uh, four bolts. Uh, it uh, all comes together. We'll talk about some of the compromises. I think there's actually some optimizations you can definitely do with this printer mechanically for higher strength, but uh, out of the box, uh, a real easy assembly. Once you get the uh, chassis all assembled, you can see there's a bunch of cables there. They're all lettered uh, with A, B, C, D, uh, and then you have to basically uh, plug them into their counterparts, uh, lettered A through D. Uh, again, uh, really easy. Uh, no one, I think, should have much trouble doing that. You mount the spool holder on top, and eventually, of course, this is what you get. Uh, it's a, a fairly large printer, actually. That's a, my work desk is actually reasonably large, um, and that's another thing that really appealed to me. For $280, this is a, a good-sized uh, print uh, head, so uh, you can actually do some pretty significant uh, prints. There's a little green butterfly in the middle. That wasn't printed by me. It actually came out of the box that way. I think that's their uh, QA test coupon. They basically run the uh, a little butterfly to prove that their assembly is working. So... Let's uh, take a look at the thing in operation. So there's a small setup procedure you got to do to uh, level the bed, they call it. Basically, you have to make sure the uh, print head sees the same Z height throughout the assembly. That was pretty fast. Um, then you have to basically insert the uh, the filament here. And you can see it's sort of coming out of the extruder. Uh, then off you go. Uh, there was a, a little test uh, coupons available. There's three of them. Uh, one was a butterfly, you can see here. I printed it out. It's, it's quite mesmerizing actually watching this thing go do about its business. Um, anyways, here's an inset picture of the uh, butterfly. So, obviously heavily optimized, I'm sure, because uh, it came out absolutely perfect the first try. And I think that was that sort of the first uh, hurdle I was wondering whether or not these things were still complete toys you have to play with uh, indefinitely to get something useful out of, or if you have to, um, you can just sort of use them. Um, now, after I got the butterfly going, I then printed some thumb screws here, which were um, for a camera mounts. This uh, You get a lot of models off the internet. Um, it should be no surprise here if you're uh, watching this video and hearing about it and you know about 3D printers. I'm not obviously saying anything new, but all cool to me. Um, let's see. The, uh, then I got to the engineering mode, actually, which is really where I bought the printer for. And here's some 8mm uh, rigid uh, support uh, rail holders I got off, I think, Thingverse. And uh, they printed out just beautifully. They were actually just great. So um, this printer actually looks like it's a usable bit of kit. So this is the enclosure which has all the control electronics, three pieces here. Uh, this top piece here has the uh, little display panel at the 45 degrees. It has what looks like some sort of motor drivers uh, down here. Uh, there's a power supply and of course the AC entry. Uh, the power supply is from a company called Sompon. It's uh, rated at 240 watts, uh, 12 volt output. No uh, UL, CSA, TUV listings on it. There's no safety uh, certification showing. 
probably not a huge surprise at this low price point. Um, AC entry here, a little fan. Um, let's start looking at all the interesting design decisions they made. Uh, let's see, the AC entry is here, uh, the wire here is yellow. Uh, if it was in European standard, it should be green with a yellow stripe. If it's uh, for North America, it should be green, so it's the wrong color, but so what? Uh, same thing with the color here, it's black and red. Uh, if this was uh, North America, it would be black and white. If it's uh, Europe, it should be uh, brown and uh, blue, I believe. Uh, but no matter. Um, more disturbingly, the uh, the chassis ground goes straight to the power supply, which is okay. The power supply obviously is a metal case, and then it attaches to uh, this plate here. Um, unfortunately, it's heavily painted, so there's some probability, though, that the screws will dig in and, and conduct to this plate. Then this plate has a little bit of masking around the holes here, although you can see it's not very concentric, a lot of process control, and that'll eventually connect back here. Uh, and then, of course, the back panel has the same sort of scheme. There's a little bit of paint that's been left off here, so it'll connect back to a tab over here. So uh, should you get a fault where the AC wire touches this back plate here, it's obviously got to go through a large series of connections. Um, if any one of those should fail, of course, you'd have a live chassis. Uh, thermal engineering also kind of... Um, kind of weak let's be honest um little tiny fan here uh it obviously uh, pushes air into the case uh it's got uh too many vents there's two vents on this side here vents on this side here there's a fan inside here which overwhelms this little tiny fan but the air comes in uh gets sucked into the supplies there as i can see then gets pushed out of uh, this uh, fan here where it goes upwards and then sort of uh, wanders out of these vents here um kind of wacky though because you want you want the air to push past the electronics which are quite, of course going to get hot having the vent over here for example it becomes a low resistance pass which allows the air just to flow here kind of uselessly rather than pushing it or venting it through the electronics you want um, so not a huge amount of sophistication the thermal uh, design some nice touches though they've uh, got a cable here that's uh, a shielded uh, they put some aluminum tape around it so I presume for EMI uh, they even claimed SEC compliance, but I haven't bothered checking whether or not the reg uh, actually is uh, legit or not. Uh, let's see. The um, the main chassis, uh, no, sorry, the main harness for the chassis comes out here. Uh, it's been wrapped by some sort of uh, fairly rugged plastic, but you can see it's not um, not complete. So there's little gaps. Uh, passes through a sharp edge here. Again, sort of workmanship. This wouldn't be a really strong design approach. You really want that to have uh, some sort of grommet on it. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm going to uh, take out this uh, kind of circuit board here and uh, take a peek at it. I don't think I'll take out the control board. I'm pretty sure it's just an LCD display with a little uh, spin wheel, so it's not too interesting. Okay, uh, as I said I was going to take the circuit board out, take a close look at it, but I realize this cable is actually glued to the other assembly. I'm not willing to break the bond. Uh, but some quick Googling shows that this board is a Melzi uh, 1.0, 2.0 eBay hybrid, according to the RepRap org website. Um, just pop up that uh, little page. Uh, it looks like it's a um, Atmel controller, and it's got motor drivers, the A4988 stepper motor. So it looks like a pretty straightforward uh, design. Looks like it's pretty actually pretty well supported because the firmware uh, looks fairly universal. Uh, the board itself, actually, uh, the soldering and such looks uh, fairly adequate. Doesn't look too bad at all. So that's uh, what's going on there. So there's all sorts of fascinating sort of uh, design decisions they made that uh, weren't necessary. The frame's not very rigid. You can actually rock it back and forth fairly easily. And that's because the way they've joined these two pieces of metal is fairly weak. There's a, what they really need is like a gusset plate, uh, sort of simple engineering. It's all made out of uh, one millimeter thick uh, steel. And uh, they could easily have reorganized these uh, structures so that they could have had a very rigid support, even if it had to be two pieces for shipping but had, a, had like a triangle here to actually prevent the bending. And there's all sorts of solutions on the internet about how you build a, a rod here, which basically ties these two pieces more rigidly together. But really fascinating, sort of, um, it's a real mix of fascinating engineering and sort of near misses. Uh, same thing here, this is a, a pulley wheel for this uh, platform that goes back and forth. And uh, you can see the bending moment on as, as the cable pulls, it wants to, of course, bend the, the flange here this way. And of course, I got a three-dimensional piece going on here, so this this plate here prevents the bend. But of course, it's not supported here. A U-shaped piece of metal, which would have been the exact same number of bends, would have been a, a more rigid approach here. So fascinating sort of uh, engineering they've got here, sort of uh, things that you, I think you could optimize so much easier. Uh, some more things here. The lead screw, of course, is the bronze fitting of steel, which is exactly right. You want to have that. The bronze uh, doesn't cut into the steel lead rods. So that's really well done. The uh, print head here um, has just a huge uh, festival of cables coming out. I think they're all like this, maybe, but um, 
and this all has to go back to a fairly long lead to actually the electronics. So there's a fairly large inductive kick, I imagine, once these motors turn on, and there doesn't seem to be any sort of freewheeling diodes at this end, so now that kind of surprised me. I would have thought they would have put the electronics closer to the extruder end, but the uh, software layout's actually fairly straightforward. You can obviously see the X, Y, and Z Cartesian coordinates of the extruder head, all at zero at the moment. Uh, let's see, that's the temperature of the nozzle, and that's the temperature of the heated bed, and there's a little bit of information below. Um, you put an SD card into the unit, uh, which has the um, model file that you wish to print. Uh, you mount it uh, into the file system. You then uh, ask it to print the file. Uh, you pick out one of the files that I've had. Um, seems to be tons of models on the internet that you can grab for uh, things. And then off it goes. It'll slowly start to heat up the printed uh, bed, and then it'll heat up the extruder, and uh, it prints. It takes hours to print some of these models, if you're uh, wondering. I was quite surprised how long it takes. So it's definitely something I think you do uh, where you uh, go overnight and uh, see what you get in the morning. Well, there we go. Uh, it kind of has met the first uh, hurdle that I put for it, and that uh, basically I was wanting to buy something that simply works rather than uh, having a hobby of building 3D printers. Um, definitely got out of the box and uh, was able to get some models out of it uh, fairly quick with a uh, very minimum of fuss. So it uh, looks like this is going to get a little more study as I uh, try to use it for some of my future projects.